Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Rafe Sonnenschein, Executive Director of the Pat Brun Institute for Public Affairs at Cal State LA. Um, we're just going to take our time today. Um, I mean, it's always nice when you're like right on the dot with time, but we're going to have a great time today. So just stick with us. We're going to cover everything. You're going to have a chance to talk. It's going to be very exciting. A great philosopher once said, 90% of life is showing up. And uh, by virtue of what's in this room in terms of the people, we've already accomplished half of what we wanted to do just by watching you all interact and talk with each other when we first got here. It was, it was well worth the extra time, and we're, we're thrilled that you're here. I always operate under the principle of WWPBT. What would Pat Brown think? Uh, if Pat Brown were here today, I'll tell you a little bit about Pat Brown and why he'd be so excited about this. Uh, Pat Brown... Uh, never went to college, which people don't know. He was a very smart kid, but his parents didn't have enough money for him to go to college. He had to get his own way to law school, where he graduated number one in his class, uh, then was elected a, a district attorney of San Francisco, and eventually was elected governor of California, where, as he would have been the first to tell you, was the greatest governor in the history of California. <clears throat> There's some debate within the Brown family at this time. Um, <laughs> But still, Pat Brown was a remarkable guy. And when he was in office, he made sure to establish a state university system that would mean that no kid like Pat Brown would ever be denied the opportunity for higher education. And it's because of Pat Brown that we call the fees you pay fees, not tuition, because it was supposed to be tuition free, but what the heck, nobody's perfect. But it is still the greatest bargain in the United States. When Pat Brown left office, defeated by the man after whom that building where the speaker works is named in downtown Los Angeles, he created an institute of public affairs and tried to find a university at which to place it. And naturally, he was being chased by every big university in California. But he took a walk on the campus of Cal State LA, and he saw kids who reminded him of the kid that he had been coming up excited, enthusiastic, bright, looking for a leg up into the American dream. And he placed the Pat Brown Institute at Cal State Los Angeles, where it has been ever since. And we're not letting it go. Uh, it's going to stay there forever. And it's a real legacy of Pat Brown. Pat Brown loved universities, but he was very suspicious of academics. And you could hear from my friend, Anthony Rendon, uh, we use the word academic when we're mad at somebody. <clears throat> That was a pretty good report, but it was a little academic. Um, and that was Pat Brown. He used to take my predecessor, Jaime Regalado, out for lunch and say, don't be one of those pointy-headed damn intellectuals. And poor Jaime, who was, of course, an intellectual, but out in the world very much so, he said, be engaged, be part of the community, say things that people will understand at all times. That's why Pat Brown would love the people in this room he would love the Speaker of the Assembly. I knew him as a professor at Cal State Fullerton. We taught together. You've heard him today. This is how we taught. He was a very popular professor. But he did what I tell every one of my students who was interested in politics. Don't go into politics. Go into community service and then let politics be the natural outgrowth of your community service. And he's turned out to be a phenomenal speaker, very modest about their accomplishments. But Pat Brown would love this guy. He'd particularly love the story he told our students at Cal State LA that his GPA as a young man was below 1.0. And then he went and got a PhD at UC Riverside. Obviously his GPA did go up after that. First question from the audience, a student raises his hand and says, Mr. Speaker, what's it, what's it about that 1.0 thing? They thought it was the greatest thing they'd ever heard. But again, it was remembering where you came from and remembering to be both an intellect and a person who uses their mind for public purposes. When Efren called us to talk about this project, he had us at hello. Because what he said was the Southeast needs to really have an identity, to, to have an identity for itself to address everything it is doing, and it needs to be based on data and information that's accessible to the community. It was music to our ears. Five minutes into the meeting, we were committed. Uh, we've talked since then about how committed we are. The Pat Brown Institute is committed all the way on this to whatever it takes. This is the beginning, not the end of this process. Uh, we were asked to think about who might make a presentation about the basic information 
that would be helpful to the community, and we right away came to Beacon Economics. We've worked with them many times, and I'm about to introduce Chris Thornburg to, to give us some of that information. Like the speaker, and like Pat Brown, Beacon Economics' expertise is taking complicated data and making it usable and useful for the community to set off a conversation. I'm here to tell you, don't take what they say as the word of God just because it comes from somebody with an advanced degree and a lot of information. Be aggressive, be assertive, work with it, reshape it, find a way to make it useful because that's what Pat Brown would have wanted us to do is to take academic knowledge and make it not so academic and I think you'll see that, that Chris Thornburg is very good at that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Chris. He's the founding partner of Beacon Economics. Um, uh, he has served as an advisor to uh, major public officials, including California State Treasurer John Chung, who served as his, on his Council of Economic Advisors. He has a PhD in business economics from the Anderson School at UCLA a BS degree in business administration from the State University of New York at Buffalo. Uh, he's been an advisor to numerous organizations, and if you follow the network of presentations in greater Los Angeles, very often Beacon Economics is giving a very up-to-date survey of economic conditions. Uh, he's taken very seriously by everybody from business leaders, labor leaders, community organizations, people in academia. Um, he worked with us on a project much like this one in the San Joaquin Valley for the California Endowment, where we were asked to do an asset-based approach. And then Chris and I went out for a beer afterwards with some of the people from the San Joaquin Valley who had been there. And here's the first thing they said to us before we had had too many beers to have a clear understanding of the rest of the conversation. It's the first time somebody has come in with the notion about assets in the valley as opposed to liabilities. And it gives us the energy for the first time to address the liabilities because we're starting with the assets. So naturally when Ephraim asked us about this, we knew that Chris was the, the person to go to. Uh, his organization, Beacon Economics, uh, started around 2007 and Chris was among the first people to predict the subprime mortgage lend lending crisis and the economic downturn. I have to tell you, by the way, if he had guessed wrong, that would have been fairly embarrassing. Uh, he was telling people that things were going to go badly pretty quickly, and they did. And I think that was based on very, very good information uh, for which he deserves a lot of credit. The event is being live streamed on Ustream.com, and I'm honored to say I have absolutely no idea what that is. Um, and also, before I introduce Chris, once again, I do want to thank the staff of the Pat Brown Institute, uh, who have done a wonderful job, uh, Ernesto Morales and his team, who have been really phenomenal, and the California Community Foundation, who are just great and easy partners to work with. One more thing, I would like to ask all of the elected officials and representatives of staffs of elected officials to please stand and be acknowledged before we introduce Chris. Could you all do that, please? And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Chris Thornburg, who will do his thing.